Hey guys, um, so with this channel, I didn't want to just make it like a couple channel where we just do basic couple shit. Like, I want this channel to be a mixture of almost everything that I like to watch, like all the type of videos that I love to watch. And what am I? Actually, I can almost say this is my favorite type of video to watch is like um reading creepy stories like creepy story storytelling i love just watching people tell me weird creepy stories and today's weather just has me in that mood to get creepy <laughs> so i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna read a um story called doors it's a creepy pasta called doors and my favorite type of creepy pastas are the ones with a plot twist so i looked up some and i read them and i like this one so, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to jump right into it. Okay, so I, um, <clears throat> I changed the scenery around a tad bit because I like, I don't like how the background in, the la in my first video was, I was adopted. I never knew my real mother, rather, I knew her at one time, but I left her side when I was too little to be able to remember. I love my adopted family, though. They were so kind to me. I ate well, lived in a warm and comfortable house, and I got to stay up pretty late. Let me tell you about my family real fast. First, there was my mother. I never called her mom or anything like that. I just called her by her first name, Janice. She didn't mind at all though. I called her that for so long, I don't think she even noticed. Anyhow, she's a calm woman. I think that she is the one who recommended my adoption in the first place. Sometimes, I would lay my head against her in front of the television and she would tickle my back with her nails. She's one of those Hollywood mothers. Second, there's dad. His name was Richard, but he never really liked me much, so I began to refer to him as dad in a desperate attempt to gain his affection. It didn't work. I think that no matter what I called him, he would never love me as much as his own child. That's understandable, so I really didn't press the matter. The most notable attribute of dad was his unmoving sternness. He was not afraid to pop his children when they did something wrong. I found that out before I could use the restroom properly. He didn't hesitate to spank me. Well, I'm in line and it's because of his methods. Lastly is my sister. Little Emily was really young when I was adopted, so we were about the same age, but she was slightly older. I like to think of her as my little sister though. We got along better than any sibling could possibly get along. We will always stay up late and just talk. Well, she did a lot of the talking. I mostly just listened because I loved her. It was a great setup that we had. We were short on, we were short on bathrooms because I didn't want to sleep on the living floor by myself when I was little. I had a pallet set up for me next to her bed on the floor. This is where I have slept since, but it's cool with me because I enjoy being with her and I had always felt pretty protective of my little sis. Everything changed on a horrible Wednesday night. I was at home taking a nap when little Emily opened the front door. The sound of the door open pulled me to a state of consciousness and I walked from the room down to the hall to the living room. That's when I was that's when I first remember it was Wednesday. It was never any good at keeping track what day it was. Actually, I'll just go ahead and say it. My sense of time was horrible. But nevertheless, I knew it was Wednesday because Emily had just come home from her church's youth group gathering. She walked in the front door and hugged me, and then was followed by Dad and Janice. You have a good nap? Janice said teasingly as she ruffled up my hair. I just shook my head away and snorted in a manner that clearly expressed that I was teasing her back. Don't you snort at your mother like that, said my father gruffly with authority. He shut the door behind him and hung up his coat. I was clearly joking, I growled under my breath. He must not have heard me because I didn't feel him smack me. Emily then proceeded to our room and I followed. She started telling me about her day, you know, usual teenage girl stuff, but I listened so that she could feel better. After her summary, she suggested watching TV and I obliged and jumped onto the couch as she was going for her remote. She rolled her eyes at my little brother-like immaturity and scooted me over and sat me down. The TV turned on and we watched it together until the sun went down. Emily was the kind of girl that instead of watching cartoons and soap operas, would rather watch Discovery Channel and Animal Planet and National Geographic. I liked those too, so I didn't mind. 
Actually, those were the only channels that could hold my attention. So it got late and Janice walked up behind the sofa. Emily, it's past your bedtime. Turn off the television and go to your room. You too. She pointed at me. Emily turned off the program we were watching grungily and stood up. She started down the hallway to her room. As I followed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. We went to our room and Emily turned off the light. Just as we did, I caught a flash of movement out the corner of my eye. It was out the window, but as soon as I redirected my line of sight to where the window was, it was no longer in my peripheral vision. Was it that what I thought I saw was gone? <clears throat> I still remained alert, for my sister's sake. I lit there in darkness with nothing but the thin ray of light from the street lamp outside to illuminate the room. It wasn't much. Time and time, I could have sworn that I heard subtle sounds just out the window. A twig break, knees crunching, clothes jostling, and all the while I could smell a faint stench of sweat and blood. I kept my eyes open most of the night. The sounds outside subsided and the smell left my nose. I began to feel at ease, my eyelids closed. Not long after that, I heard a very loud crash on the other side of the house. I was up in an instant. There's someone in the house, I barked with extreme adrenaline coursing through me. Wake up, I surely pleaded with Emily. She did, and as soon as I saw her sit up, I ran to my parents' room. Dad was dead. His neck was splayed open and gapping as blood spilled out of it, off the bed, and onto the floor. I saw that the master's bedroom door was closed, and just before it outside was a man. A man. I don't feel comfortable calling it that. He was very large and rugged. He turned around and saw me, and that's when I saw him accurately for the first time. I won't forget it. His eyes were large and beady and trapped with lust. He was selling a beard that was badly unkept with blood dripping off of it. His clothes were dirty and his face was cold. Just then, I noticed the same horrid smell of sweat and blood from earlier, but this time it was overwhelming. He saw me, he saw me and he grinned with a set of crooked yellow teeth. That smile threw me off. I thought that I was going to die. But then he turned back to the bathroom door, completely unperturbed by my presence. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I watched as he shouldered through the door that was mom's only protection. I watched as he raised the large razor he was carrying, but had obviously neglected to use it correctly. I watched as he sliced her open and tore her to shreds. I then heard something, the last thing I wanted to hear. It was Emily's scream coming from behind me. The large monstrosity looked up from my, from my budget mother and stared at my little sister. I was distraught. He stood up quickly and started walking towards us. My sis turned and ran, and I was at a loss when he bypassed me and went straight after her. Why was she still in the house? Had she not assessed the situation and run? Apparently not, and now she was dead and I was alone. I ran after them both. I expected the man to kill him as he had done the rest of my family, but I was sadly mistaken. He grabbed her by the arm and jerked her as a way to make clear that he was in control. He dragged her through the house. I was making all the noise I could now, hoping and praying that someone would come to my aid. He mustn't take her, not her. As he passed me, I backed against the wall and whimpered with terror. Why? He didn't respond, except by putting his free hand on my head. He gave a very crooked grin and a very cold and unnatural laugh. I followed him to the door where he dragged my helpless sister after him. He opened it, pulled her out, and slammed it shut behind him. I am now sitting in the house with my mutilated adopted parents, shivering and whimpering with dismay. He's out there with her, doing who knows what to her, and I can't do anything. I would if I could, but I can't. I would chase after him in a heartbeat, but I can't. I sit here looking at the front door. I look down at my paws. If only I could open doors. I don't know, that wasn't too scary. It was just like, um, it wasn't too scary. It was really sad. The plot twist wasn't like that big of a plot twist. At first I thought like the fucking guy who was killing them was gonna be like his real mom. 
a transgender fucking man. Like, his real mom was a transgender man, and she fucking came back, killed him, and took him. Like, something, like, unexpected and crazy like that. But, yeah, that's all for today. Um, uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and share to keep us growing. So, yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys later. <laughs>